Given the roster that's been developed over the last few years for Detroit, Cade Cunningham has a great chance at reversing the fortunes of their franchise. With small ball stretch fives and fours like Kelly Olynyk, Jeremy Grant, the rookie Luca Garza, to go along with a versatile small forward in Sadiq Bey, the Detroit Pistons have great building blocks in place around the number one pick. You're about to find out if Detroit's days as bottom feeders have come to an end and why they're built for the modern NBA. Before continuing, over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you fall into that percentage, help the channel get to 50k by subscribing. Also, leave a like on this video, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. The Detroit Pistons franchise have had two prolonged stretches of complete dominance. Before looking at Cade, Luca Garza, Beef Stew, Isaiah Stewart, and also Detroit's current veterans who look ready to lead the team back to respectability, Let's quickly look at those generations, as in the 1980s and early 2000s. In both of those championship winning eras, the team's roster was perfectly suited for the at the time modern NBA. One of the greatest point guards ever in Isaiah Thomas, along with two top notch scoring wings in Joe Dumars and Mark Aguirre, plus interior forces Dennis Rodman and Bill Lambeer, fueled the bad boy Pistons to back to back world titles in 1989 and 1990. Additionally, the team had enforcers like John Sally, the 6'11", 250 pound Daryl Dawkins, and the 6'10", 240 pound Rick Mahorn. In an era dominated by big men and physicality, Detroit had all that and more. 11 years after that, led by five-time All-Star Chauncey Billups and all-time great defensive player Ben Wallace from 2002 to 2008, the Pistons made at least the conference semifinals in every year, which included one championship, two finals appearances, and six East Finals appearances. In an era dominated by mid-range shooting, ISO shot creation, and hard-nosed defense, the Pistons made defensive prominence their identity. Ben Wallace, Chauncey Billups, Tayshawn Prince, and Richard Hamilton were lockdown defenders and solid enough offensively to lead the Pistons to two straight East titles. That team proved defense wins championships. 13 years after that, now in 2021, and the NBA revolves around space and pace three-point shooting offenses with shooting big men, small ball fours, and guards who can operate the pick and roll. The Pistons have been underwhelming for quite some time now, making the playoffs in only two of the last 12 seasons. It's been a long time since the passionate fan base in Motown have had anything to cheer about. Although it's a city struggling with violence and poverty, the downtown core, view of Lake Michigan, and people of Detroit provides a nice vibe. That's just my experience of going there for hockey tournaments when I was a kid. Now, following an influx of talent, the coming decade for Detroit basketball will help the city's economy and enhance the overall vibe. When Detroit won the draft lottery this year and were set to pick number one, that meant they'd been gifted the talents of the shot-creating phenom, Cade Cunningham, a consensus first-team All-American, the Big 12 Player of the Year, a kid who ripped through the nets to average 26-4 during his one and only year at Oklahoma State. His 6'7 frame and shot creation make Cunningham look like a hybrid of Luka Doncic and James Harden. There's a ton of hype, but with how Motorcade looked in Summer League, there's no denying his potentially all-time great craftiness. Before finishing up in Vegas due to calf soreness, in three games for the Pistons, Cade averaged 19 points, shooting 43% from the field and 50% from deep. From watching him live consistently for the first time, what became evident early on was how good his defense was. Cade's going to be overwhelming for NBA guards to try and score on. He's pesky in the passing lanes, he's laterally quick, and his 7 foot 1 wingspan allows him to swiftly cover ground. Meanwhile, offensively, it's Cunningham's already all-star caliber pull-ups off the dribble. Defenders have to be wary of the number one pick's speed, size, and his driving to the basket, so they're hesitant to press up on him. Making him so tough to stop is how he can sell the drive and then elusively hop into pull-ups with his high release point and fundamentally sound trigger. NBA superstars written all over the man, I guarantee... Guarantee! 
<laughs> He's going to come in and change how people look at the Pistons franchise, along with their six foot seven combo guard Cade. Coming up, I'll show you another reason for the 2022 Pistons being well suited for the modern style of basketball. After that, you'll see my predictions for Detroit's future. But first, let's look at the squad's impressive young talent. 22-year-old number 19 pick from 2020's draft, Sadiq Bey, proved to be more than just a 3 and D player in his rookie year. He displayed the ability to carry the Pistons scoring load. The 6'8", 215-pounder significantly improved throughout his first pro campaign. In March, Sadiq dropped 28 points, made 6 threes, and grabbed 12 rebounds against the Raptors and dropped six 20-point games in the month of May. We didn't see him too much as the small ball power forward. That was Jeremy Grant's position. But even though Bay's a natural small forward, he's perfectly capable of sliding over to that ever so valuable small ball four spot. Shooting big men and small ball fours, as I've mentioned in previous videos, have led to the post-point guard dominated era in the NBA. Detroit has a lot of those players, which we'll get to. Killian Hayes, Isaiah Stewart, and recent second round pick Luca Garza all have differing qualities which could significantly add to the Pistons' attack. The Frenchman floor general Hayes had a miserable rookie year after being taken with the seventh pick last year, limited to only 26 games in which he shot 35% from the field, 28% from deep, and averaged just seven points. However, if you can see past that lack of scoring, which Cade will provide in 2022, there were a few glaring positives for Killian's first year. He averaged 5.3 assists in only 25 minutes per game, which chalks up to 7.4 dimes per 36 minutes. Additionally, he shot 82% from the charity stripe and snatched a steal per game. Remember, Detroit drafted Hayes for his ability to run the offense. Of course, he has to be more efficient, but without consistent playing time, the 20-year-old wasn't able to establish a rhythm, which is crucial for his play style. Killian did average three turnovers, but for the most part, the playmaking he showed off for the limited experience that he has was fairly impressive, so there's tons of untapped potential for the soon-to-be sophomore. Unlike Hayes, Beef Stew Isaiah Stewart lived up to expectations in his rookie year. The 6'9", 250-pound center has a 7'4 wingspan, which allowed him to put up 1.4 blocks per game last year. Throughout the season, the Rochester native went from coming off the bench to starting for Detroit, leading all rookies in blocks, blocks per game, rebounds, and rebounds per game this season. That earned the 20-year-old Stewart all-rookie second-team honors, so look for him to develop into one of the better old-school centers in today's NBA. Rounding out the young talent, there's a slight unknown in this year's 52nd overall draft pick, Luca Garza. The four-year product of Iowa was the National Player of the Year in 2021, but his team lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament. More concerning for scouts, though, was how his quickness and athleticism would adjust to the pro game. Well, Garza's responded to those doubters in Summer League, averaging 15.2 points in 21 minutes on a blistering 52% from the field and 40% from deep. I don't use this word lightly, but quite honestly, Garza looks like a complete steal down at pick number 52. His body frame and movement out there resembles Nikola Jokic, the balance and fundamentally sound trigger that Luka has on his three-point shots, his touch around the basket and effort make up for his lack of springiness. One of the main reasons for the Pistons being built for today's game are two front court players, one somewhat traditional in Kelly Olynyk, and the other a modern small ball four in Jeremy Grant. Jeremy started his career as a small forward and naturally, he's a three but towards the end of his time in Denver and following Blake Griffin's departure last season, he's morphed into a stretch big, a contender for the MIP. It was a breakout season for Jeremy Grant in 2021, and now he'll look to make his first all-star appearance in 2022. The Pistons' big-time free agent pickup was getting Kelly Olynyk for three years and $37 million. Olynyk had a quietly solid season for the Heat and Rockets last year. He was extremely efficient in the 2020 Finals with Miami and is one of the more underrated five men across the league. 
having experienced playing in the biggest moments, Kelly's signing filled the Pistons' desperate need for veteran leadership. Quality center, quality signing. Kelly ranked on my top 10 underrated signings list yesterday. Links in the description for that video. Based off all that, are the Pistons going to make the playoffs this year? Making it this year would be something special. It signified the impact of Cade and the progression of the Pistons' young pieces. Well coached under Dwayne Casey, who's familiar with building up winning cultures, Detroit can certainly make a run at the play-in tournament. The former coach of the year, Dwayne, was a big part of the Mavs' defense in their 2011 championship, and he did an outstanding job in Toronto, leading them to five straight playoff appearances. He may have been embarrassed by LeBron, but Casey's ability to develop players in his system has a lengthy history. He turned two primary ball handlers in DeRozan and Lowry into one of the best backcourts in the league. He developed Jonas Valanciunas into one of the better low post centers in the game. He had a big impact on Van Vliet, Siakam, and Powell's game as well. I mean, this year, the Pistons realistically finished with anywhere from 32 to 36 wins, but once Garza and Motorcade get a season under their belts, the sky's the limit after that, especially considering another year will mean a more developed Killian Hayes and Isaiah Stewart, and veterans in Jeremy Grant and Kelly Olenek will build up chemistry with those youngins. Will the Pistons make the playoffs in your opinion? Let me know in the comments section. Detroit fans, fans of other teams, whoever you are, let's be friends. Follow me on Instagram at dflowhoops. I just posted a Cade highlight on there. I also post polls and updates. Anyways, hope you have a great one. You're the best for sticking around. Dflow signing off.